Hi, I'm Al Davis with Sky Miles LLC. Sky Miles LLC is a real estate consulting firm who focuses on hard money loans, construction, wholesale properties, and tenant placement. So anything you need in real estate, feel free to give us a call. We'll be more than happy to help you or guide you on the way to success in real estate. Don't forget to go to SkyMilesLLC.com for more information. Hey, it's a day in the life. So, Mel, what are we going to be doing today? So, we got an exciting day today, man. First, we're going to stop by the food hall at um, 2600 West North oh, Avenue. Bar, yeah. Yeah, so we're going to check that out. It's a project we're working on with Cotton Heights CDC. Then, man, we got to go look at some wholesale properties. We got a couple good properties in the bank centers. Got some other properties, some wholesalers. We're going to check these properties out. So this, this is a new restaurant and bar that we get ready to open up. It's gonna be one, two, three, four, five, six, six different restaurants. There's gonna be a bar here, something for the community. Um, Mel the Spearhead is Mel's John. So tell them about what's gonna be going on here, Mel. So yeah, this is a food hall concept. We just, similar to uh, what you have in West Baltimore, our house, um, seven stars is the first one in, in this part of the city. Um, all of the vendors are from West Baltimore. Um, actually, most of them are women of color, and they all have contacts or connections with West Baltimore. So this be the first place to sit down and eat uh, in this part of the city since uh, they put Fridays in Mondawmin Mall. So we're really excited about it. Um, we're gonna have some soul food, a deli, a bakery, some coffee and ice cream. We're gonna have some Caribbean uh, brunch food, some loaded potatoes, and then we're gonna have some healthy food options. Good space seating for about 120 people inside, and another maybe 20 to 30 the outside, right here next to Coppin State University, right on the gateway of West Baltimore, West North Avenue. So we're excited about this. And um, come check us out. Hopefully we'll be opening, our, doing our grand opening Juneteenth, so look for us. We'd like to get some, a lot of students from Coppin to come by. And if you're, in, if you're in the vicinity of Coppin University, right down the street from there. So we're looking forward to people come by and support us. There's not many places to eat around here, but it's gonna be some good food. And if you drink, it's gonna be good drinks here. So. If y'all have any questions or want to know the address, feel free to reach out to us. Park Heights. Um, scheduled for the final inspection on the 19th. That's for Park Heights? Okay, okay. Permit for Franklin Town. Yeah, what about the permit for Franklin Town? Hello? Yeah, I'll send it to him today. Send it to you today, man. Yeah, yeah, my dad, my, my dad took my, my connection, uh, my connection lady, and, uh, and uh, I see how much it's gonna be. Okay. And what we waiting for on 98? Just a date? For 98? Yeah. No, you passed, right? Did you pass your final? The plumbing? Oh, yeah, you did. It's final. Yeah. 122. Uh, for 22? Yeah. Oh. This whole block, this whole block, look. They just redid that whole block right there. The house on the next block just sold for 250. So we get this from the bank, so we can make this look like those. Look like somebody just boarded this up. Can they start working on this one? Man, they this is wholesale property we got from the bank. So whenever we get wholesale properties, we come out and look at the property so that we know exactly what we're getting our hands into. So we come out and we look at the property. This property, it was a squatter in it. The bank did, the bank had called me, told me they had the property, but it's a squatter in it. And it's a long process to get a squatter out. So they wanted me to come out here, build some type of rapport with the squatter and try to get them out, which we did. We built rapport with them, end up giving them five, yeah, $5,000 to move out and leave the house clean. So he agreed to it. He cleaned the house. We gave him a check from the bank and he's gone. So now the bank has control of the property. Um, they have to do the paperwork, get it ready. Generally they call us and, and give us a price on how much they're gonna want for the property. It's a foreclosure. And then we could either control it and wholesale it or keep it and rehab it. 
And so they came and put this on because so there were no other squatters would come in. They put these big steel doors on there. It's hard to get in these steel doors. So this is something good if you really don't want anybody breaking in it. But it's a good house. We're going to go in there and take a look at it. And what's the process we do once we get it under control, Mel? So basically, once we get it under control, you know, we just have our contract and then we try to work and market the property to our investors. So, you know, but first, you know, we look at the neighborhood, obviously, we, we look at assess the property, which we've already done. As you can see, um, right around here, they've done a whole bunch of houses on this end, some rentals, some bricks, yeah, some new, see, new bricks right, right there. Yeah. This is uh, All those are not too far from Union Square neighborhood, which is a historic neighborhood. So they're doing some development. We may be about 10 blocks up from MLK and University of Maryland. But you know, University of Maryland is doing a lot of buildings, so they're coming back this way. So um, I think this is a good opportunity, a good piece of property, particularly for either some traveling nurses or maybe even somebody that buys a homeowner. So we're going to check this out. And you can see, I see somebody getting ready to start to work here because they, they just they just boarded that door up and, they, and they're working on that one. So that one got bought. Somebody, we're going to try to get the one next door to it. If we get this one, we're going to rehab it because I, we personally know somebody on the next block that just rehabbed two houses, sold each one for 250 So we're hoping that we can make this equal to or better than the house of the block. We could sell it for 250 or wholesale it, and whoever fixes it up can sell it for 250 So we're going to go in and show you what we get from the bank on the wholesale properties. Go ahead. Watch the step coming in. Watch the step. And then, of course, you know, properties like this, all the electric is gone. So you got to bring your tool of the trade. You got to bring your, your headlight. So this is, this is a tool of the trade. But as you can see, the guy that had this from the story, it was a, a, a guy who fixed it up. He did a whole lot of work, work to it. As you can see, he did the tray ceilings already, put the recessed lights in there. He did the hardwired smoke detectors right there. And he did the exposed brick. And he also put the floors in. So... I, when I come in the house, I always look, and this is a pet peeve, when you're a wholesaler and you call me with a house and I ask you, does it have a boiler or does it have HVAC and you don't know, then I'm assuming that you didn't go look at the property. And if you didn't go look at the property, it, it made me think you're trying to get free money. So somebody called you with a property, you hung up with them and called me directly with the property, and you didn't go look at the property. So that's, to me, that's kind of get, trying to get free money, and I don't like doing business like that. I like people to try to work for their money. So that's why we come look at the property. So if anybody asks me, is this, is it an HVAC, is it a boiler, um, you know, what, what kind of electric does it have? If they ask me questions, I'll be able to answer them. Like, is, you know, do it need windows? Do, does it need flooring? I'll be able to answer because we actually come and Look at the property. Yeah, how many bathrooms? Basically, have you done any research? You walk through the property. So, like this one, like I was saying, they did a lot of work in here. You can already see they ran the ductwork, so it's got a, a relatively new, updated um, HVAC system. They did an open floor plan, which is what most people want. Right here, and you go right to my left. There's a powder room on the first floor. So, um, and then of course they did like a breakfast bar in this area too. So, I I think this is a property that's got some good bones, definitely. And this would be a great, I think, a great, because a lot of the work was done. So internally, a lot of the structure, I think, is already done. Um, you just kind of come in here and do a lot of cosmetic rehab. Yeah, it's not going to cost us a lot at all. But as you can see, when people break in the house and they squat in the house, they take stuff out of here. See, they took basically all the electric because inside the electric wire is copper. It's not a lot of copper, but they could take strip all the electric wire and take all the copper. If you could look up there, see how they cut all the electric wires at the top? And they took the copper out of each one of those wires so we got to pretty much replace all these it's a little the little bit of damage they did by cutting those now we got to rerun the wires all throughout the entire house to give it new electric so we got to put a new SEU cable in there we got to new 10 to whatever 12 3 or whatever back in there so we have to redo all electric but the house is in fairly good condition considering the other house we've been dealing with so we're gonna re put the we're gonna put the kitchen back in here the windows look okay the tray ceiling is nice I think we could, we, I think we do a good job of this house putting it back together and reselling it.
Right, so what I like about this house is how they cut this, the stairs here. So they took part of the first floor, put the stairs coming down here, instead of running the stairs straight up, and or running them in the back of the house. So they ran them right down here in the front of the house. Just took a little bit of living room. So you got a three, a lower land, and you step up three. That's the main level for the living room. So it's just a good look. Then you also had a loft. You can look over down here in the basement. So when you come down, so basically you come down, the basement's already done. Obviously, it's been some damage done to the floor, but so this is like an open area. It could be like a club basement. I think there's room in the bed for a bathroom. And then we, we, encourage, we encourage everybody, when you looking at vacant houses, if you do what we do, to, if you're getting into wholesaling and you have to go look at the houses, you want to try to always be prepared by bringing a, a light, wear boots, a lot of times there's mice or rats running around. You might step on, it might be fleas, dead dogs, or anything in the house. So if you're a young lady, I suggest you bring a guy with you. And I also suggest you wear the boots, bring a light and stuff like that so you can see your way through the house because you're never telling in a vacant house what you'll run into. But as you can see, this house is in fairly good shape. If you see water coming in here, that's because the electric is off and the sump pump wasn't working, but that's an easy fix. So we can go back here and look. It's a bedroom and all that stuff back there. The furnace room. Watch it here, spider. Y'all really gonna like upstairs. So this, up here is three bedrooms on this floor, and, and, and they put the laundry room. Yep. Mm. Y'all gonna keep the carpet? No. No. Yeah. It's gonna be all waterproof laminate. Yeah, I heard that the master, I mean, that's not the master bedroom. There's a furnace on this floor too, so it's a it's a dual zone zone furnace. And it's a su it's a sub electrical panel up here. Yeah, I just, I'm just I'm like, look, man, I don't know the price will come back, but. Look at this shit go for 90. It's still a good deal. So, man, this look like it's in pretty good shape, man. It's in good shape. I think with our numbers, we can go in here and I'll be honest with you. I, like, I'm in here, I hit like 60,000. So, if the price come back real good, say if the price come back at 50, we put 60 in it, we're in at 110. Even if I put 75 in it. And the price, if the price come back at 50, put 75 in there, we're in at, what's that, 125? They go for 250. That's a good, yeah, that's a we good know, hit. We know we got comps. Yeah. Two blocks up for 250. That's good. So, I think this is better because this is closer down, like I said, the Union Square. Yeah. So yeah. you might get a little more. Um, and it, it's, it's, we're going to make sure it's updated. The floor is going to be updated. All the light fish is going to be updated. The tray ceiling. I know the one that sold for 250 didn't have no tray ceiling. So this house actually is six bedrooms. It's right? five. Three on this floor and two upstairs. But they got a master suite. But they got a, a bedroom roof. in the basement. Yeah. So hold on. One, two, three, four. Yeah. So it could be a six bedroom. Yeah. And they got a rooftop deck. Yeah. So we're going to show you the rooftop deck. Yeah. Uh, a bathroom with a shower and a tub, with a, with a stand-up shower and a tub. And what I think I would do in that bathroom, I might put the jets, the little massage jets in there, just set it off. You know, make it worth two fifty. Somebody spend two fifty. But how many bedrooms? It's um three on this floor, one in the basement, one in the basement. That's four, and it's. 
<laughs> it could be two it's up five, here. but it could be two up here. So it's five that is six or five five in a den. Well, one bath in the basement, a half a bath on the first floor, uh-huh. another bath there. That's two and a half, and it's three and a half. Wow. So look at this base. Look at this bathroom, though. And they got the little seat where you can sit in the in the shower. I'll, I'll put those little jet things yeah, in there, the the massage the shower, things. Yeah. Beauty in the shower. Oh yeah, you can look this one up. Yeah, and it got a tub. Yeah, big old bathroom. Oh, that's nice. I'm already know what you got to do with this one. You got to have a big one. Yeah. <laughs> showers for the massage and stuff this is this is a really nice house so you could do this differently because it's a pretty flat backyard so you could make this a carport yeah and this be your outdoor living space you can put a grill out here table with an umbrella so you can be out here on your laptop out here smoking your cigars yeah. you know yep. get some night breeze you know you don't gotta worry about people watching you because there's nobody over there except a little park and if you really really get fancy you can go one more deck up yeah. which a lot of people do put a rooftop deck but it's a nice deck off the back. It's a nice ass house. This is a nice house. I just said the same thing. This is a nice house. Well, like, like, how did you acquire this place, man? The bank called me. The bank called me, asking that, that I want something in Baltimore City. And um, I think once they gave me the address, I came down. But it was squatters in here. Like, I banged on the door. Some dudes came up the street, running up the street. Like, what you want with us? You know, that type of stuff. And I told them, I'm working with, working with the bank. You know, told them the situation with the property. Build a report with them. Told them what he was trying to do. You know what I'm saying? How much did it cost for you to move out and clean the house up? He gave me a number. I took the number to the bank. And then um, everybody the greedy got to outdid it and then they got a, their house back now question when you have squatters is it normal for you to do that like as far as no. give them that like yeah it's called cash for keys okay. so we give you cash, you give us the keys. That, it's been, it's been, I've been, they've been doing that for years and years. That's, that's probably the best way to get people out, see I mean, how much they'll take. So you would, you would say that's the best method to get squatters out, because I noticed that a lot of people have issues with squatters, and squatters yeah. have been changing laws and breaking laws for years. Yeah, it's not, it's not the easiest way to get them out, but it's the best way, the most legal way. Mm-hmm. I mean, you got ways it's not as legal, as I've seen people do, but it works, yeah. and it's effective, <laughs> but it's dangerous. Yeah. But probably just to ask them how much it would cost for you to get. And not, not nowadays, if people see vacant properties in the city, they just kick the door in and go in and, and, and stay claim to it. Right. And all the owner had to do is go to, 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 to the court. That could take six, eight months, yeah. up yeah. to a year. So yeah. you just you just want to negotiate with them and get them out. That's a cost of doing business now in Baltimore. Okay. I had a deal at Emerson Village. It was a single family house. The bank was given to me. I changed the locks for the bank on a Monday. So I came back to look at the house on a Wednesday. It was curtains up. I looked through the window. It was couches in there. Knock, I knock on the door. I told the lady, what, what you doing? She's like, oh, no, I signed a lease for this house. Like, let me see the lease. It was a fake lease that she did herself and signed herself. So I called the police. The police came out. She showed them the lease. The police said, you got to go to court to get her out. So it took five months. I had to take her to squad court so she lived free for five months so she do that twice a year go break in another house this this vacant and, and another five months that's for almost a whole year she lived ain't had to pay no money so she made up a lease yeah she made up a lease and, and, and got somebody to sign it and, and showed it to the police and said that she did a lease she told him she gave him uh 
$1,600 to move in plus a security deposit, but she couldn't find a receipt, you know? And so then, it's too, yeah, it's two, it's two, it's two sides to that. Cause it's people who just getting over, but then there's people that's been preyed on about people who acting like they own the property. Yes. So I've seen that happen too. That's a scam somebody, too, yeah. But somebody say they like a property like this, they'll come in, maybe fix it up or whatever. Or just be like, yeah, you can live here and give them a lease. And they don't even own the property. Yeah. Create a phony address for their business. And like, oh, you sending the rent here. And then once by the time the bank or the actual owner comes up, said, no, I, I, I got a lease from Mr. Mr. Jones, uh, uh, Jones and Company. And then they look it up. It's a phony company or whatever. And, you know, that person is stuck. You know, basically, and and then they stuck because they paid the money. So I've heard, I've seen people be victimized that way as well. Um, I, I had another friend of my investor. She her aunt's house. She went to come move back. She moved back from Atlanta. Um, got her aunt's house. She was gonna keep the house for the family. They went to the house. It was a whole family living there. Three generations living there. Same thing. They had a lease and everything. And the only way they worked it out was that somebody she knew knew some people in the neighborhood and knew the guy that was doing it. So they said, she said, well, I'm gonna let y'all stay because it's right in the middle of COVID. But then by the time the weather break, you know, they had to move out. But it was three generations, uh, four generations living in one house, man. It's crazy. So, you know, you know, you got to also be careful. Make sure, you know, you check oh, the deeds yeah. and all that. But I've seen that happen to people too. Somebody yeah. just make a phone false as if they own the house and don't need you paying them rent. Yeah. You don't even own the house. Some of these houses, you got to make sure they legit. Yeah. Some in Baltimore that I find, they're not owned by people that live in Baltimore. No. Some most of them not. The oh, majority of people. Not. Some of the properties in uh, some of these areas. Yeah. Most of my clients, I got 1,500 clients. Most of them is not in Baltimore. But they own property. Probably like 90 something percent of them not in Baltimore. They own property. Yeah. See, that's yeah, but you just gotta check, make sure this is a reputable company. Like when people go rent properties and they call, like people call me every day to rent a property. Mm-hmm. I will hope that they check me out, and make sure I'm legit. Right. Because I could just, I could, I could just find a property, get the combination to it, go and show them, be like, just do the lease, give me, give me three thousand dollars, and I'm gone. They never hear from me again. But you know, I would never do anything like that. But people are doing it. Believe me. And the worst they get is like, do they get jail time? No. no jail time. No. I ain't never seen nobody get no jail time. Man, you gotta catch them, man. I ain't never seen nobody get caught. Man, yeah, I've never seen anyone get caught. I mean, some people may eventually get caught, but there's a whole bunch of scams in real estate. Like, uh, people even getting their mortgages, their, 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 their deeds taken. Mm-hmm. Like, there's people scamming, but the whole, um, they got a whole thing, the, the life lock, you know, when you get yeah. that, like your identity. Yeah. They talking about the whole thing now, protect your deeds. Because people can come in and, and take your deed to your house and you think you got the house. Once they get that. Yeah, and, you know, and, they, and they, they've been able, people been able to hacking, man. There's all kinds of ways people hacking systems, man. So, I mean, there's ways to get out of it, but I mean, if you don't have money to pay a lawyer or even if you do have money to pay a lawyer, that's a lot of money. That's a lot of time. Man, that's tough, you know, especially if you worked all your life, you know, to buy a house. So, I mean, it tends to happen to, like, a lot of seniors, you know, I think, you know, because they be kind of victim because they just, hey, I've got my house. I've been here 30 years. I never had any issues. And and some of those people that may not be that that tech savvy, because that, that happens a lot of times too. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. it's crazy. so those are some hard stories around here, boy. But if you get a, if you get a um a squad in here, it's hard to get them out. That's the bottom line. So just try to protect your property while you're working on it. Yeah. Like put those big steel doors.